Alrighty. You're going to need a few basic tools um, to do your wiring for your blower now. You're going to need a fair needle nose. Um, you don't have to have these. They're not a requirement, but they do make life a lot easier. These are heavy gauge uh, wire cutters. They're just, they cut on all sides and they're real good for this, this wire that we're cutting. And you're going to need a pair of wire strippers. Um, also, a good multimeter doesn't hurt. You don't have to have it, but it doesn't hurt to check your voltage, make sure everything's running correctly. Um, the other things you're going to need, your basic supplies, you're going to need three three stranded wire cord. It'll have your, your power, your neutral, and your ground all in the same strand. And I think this is 300 volt. I mean, it doesn't have to be that heavy, but it's the same gauge as we have on our blower here. The other thing you're going to need, you're going to need a basic 110 outlet plug. You're going to need a multi-box for your light switch that we're going to hook up to this. And uh, you're going to need you know, a cover. You don't have to have that, but you know, it does make things safer. Other than that, we'll get started on that. But before we do anything else, I've already took the liberty of installing the flange on the, on the blower. No big deal. Just uh, get you some quarter inch by three quarter inch bolts and washers bolts and you know get your four washers and two nuts and go ahead and mount it on there. The thing that we've got to do now to address is the airflow system and I think what I'm going to do is take a piece of steel and make a flap that covers the intake. So we got to work on that next. What I've done here now is I've drawn a circle on a piece of steel that I'm going to use for the intake. So it's the intake right here is four and a quarter. If you measure from this end to right here these two points, it's four inches and one quarter inch. So the flap does not have to completely cut off the air because you're not going to want to do that anyway. So if there's a little bit of gap, you know, if you have a little bit showing, that's fine. So what I'm going to do is this here is exactly four and a quarter inches wide. So there's a flap here. If you can see it, I'm going to bend it over and drill a hole through there. And it's going to be for this screw right here. It's going to sit right there. And I think I'm going to leave this flap on as kind of like a handle so that I can swivel it back and forth to get to judge my uh, intake gauge. So we're going to go from there. This, If you want to know what the steel is, it's like, I don't know, maybe 16 gauge, something like that. It's a cover off of a fluorescent light fixture if, if you really, really want to know. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that and then uh, we'll get all that done in just a second. And there you have it. After it's been cut out, I bent this flap over and I left this one here as a handle and you can just swivel it back and forth, close your intake, halfway, open, and then you do fully close, which you still got a little gap around here, which is good because you're, you're never going to want to completely close it over because if you're not running your blast at all, then it, it, you don't, it doesn't need to be running. So there you have it. The air system now, we've already got our top flange mounted in here and it's all it is is two quarter inch by one inch bolts and you know washers and nuts and such and the flange is bolted in there, it's actually centered pretty well so that's all good there. So what we're going to do now is uh, put the assembly together. Now for the assembly, we got our our firing pipe all ready to go. All you gotta do is just screw it in there. So get up under here. One inch. To tell you the truth, you probably could take this apart and put it in there. It'd probably be a little bit easier. But this works too. Now that'd have to be super tight. See, it's spinning the rotor actually, but you know, anywhere around there is fine. Now, one thing you need, need to take into consideration is which way do you want your blast? Is this right here, this part of the forge, this, is this where you're going to be standing most whenever you go and reach for your iron? If so, you don't want to catch your blower with your knee or anything like that, so it might be best if you turn it just a little bit and offset it. And I think that's what I'm going to do. This here looks pretty pretty good to me. So after you do that, take your blower, which 
has the flange already mounted on the front. You have your flap and everything installed. From over here, since we got plenty of room, we can just thread it on there. Now, if, if you don't have this much room on your forge, you're going to have to take off your flange off of your, uh, off of your blower and just bolt it back right, right back up. You know, that's no big deal. But uh, this here is going to work pretty good, I believe. Tight now. It's one more revolution is all I can get. Right here. Looks pretty good. All right. Now, we're ready to wire. For well, the very start, you just want to take your center punch or an awl and scratch where you're getting the drill. Next, take your drill and drill your two pilot holes. That'll be for your threads. Next, take your tap and tap them out. Remember, you don't have to do it this way. You can just put bolts in through there and put nuts on the back. But this method was a little easier for me. And then finally, take your bolt and your box and hang it onto the side of the bed. One thing you want to do is go ahead and uh, strip all your wiring and get ready for the next step. Uh, one note that you want to take in consideration that your white wire is your neutral, your black wire is your power wire, and your green wire is your ground. Now then, take your plug, and all plugs um, have a center terminal, or not all of them do, some of them don't have a ground terminal, but for this case you, you want it because you have a three-stranded wire. Anyways, take your green wire and connect it to the green nut for the ground post that's in your terminal. Next, the uh, other two wires, your black and your white wire, um, it doesn't matter which terminal they go to, either side will be fine. Um, alternating current can loop flow in, in both directions, so it doesn't matter which, which way it takes its power in from. Uh, so go ahead and uh, put both of those on, tighten them up snug, and, uh, and take your time as you do this. Um, you want to make sure everything's real neat and tidy on the inside. Is the last thing you want is a bad connection or even worse a short uh, where you can uh, start a fire or uh, trip breakers or you know or, or just uh, anything bad you can you can melt wires in half and all sorts of bad things but like I said take your time and do it right finally once you get your plug done uh, take a cover that's for your plug and uh, put it back over it to protect your wires and shield it. Alright, I know this looks like a mess in here but it's really not. Um, and yes, it takes all that just to put in a switch. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about wiring, in case anybody out there doesn't know. Um, whenever you're looking at three-stranded wire, most wire that you'll see in common household is what's known as Romex. And Romex has two color-coded wires and one naked wire. And the naked wire is your ground wire. But when you're in, um, in this kind of strand, everything's insulated. So you have to know which one's which. Your green wire usually will always be your ground. So, in three strand, green wire is ground. Your hot cable will always be black. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but it is. And then you'll have a third wire, which is known as your neutral. Your neutral, you have to have a neutral and AC current to, to return the current back to, uh, well, to complete the, to complete the cycle so, you ha so that it'll have power to go somewhere else. And that's, that's AC current for you. And uh, what you're going to do is you're going to take both of your black wires here and you're going to attach them to your two terminals here on your switch. 
and when you do that, that'll put power to your blower whenever you have your power hooked up, when you have your, you know, have your cable hooked up. And your two white wires, your two neutrals, they'll be tied together. You'll, t you'll tie them together and then you'll take a little wire nut and twist on there. And then finally, your, both your green wires will go to your ground. Now, most boxes have ground already inside of them, but this one doesn't, but that's fine because we have ground here on the side of our switch. And once you do all that and put it in there, uh, cross your fingers, hope everything works, and it should work fine. All right, we get to test it. Should be good, though. All right, ain't sure it out nothing yet. Here we go. Hear it? It's going to work well. I'm excited. Okay, one last step we've got to do before this is complete is we've got to build some kind of grate to go over this. And because uh, you don't want your, your charcoal or your coal just to fall straight through there, so we need, need something. It needs to be kind of heavy because it's going to take a lot of heat. And I think the perfect thing is I've got some of this grate right here. It's actually great. And I'll cut the cut out a little chunk and put it in there and weld it. So I believe that'll be good. Other than that, all I've got to do now is uh, is uh, well, just finish it up, and that's it. We'll try it out soon. All right, here it is in action, folks. And to give you an idea of what kind of heat it's putting out, I just put this in here maybe 15 seconds ago. And it's at a, I know it looks brighter on camera, but it's a, it's a, it's a bright orange. Matter of fact, I tried to melt the end right there, if you can see it, that's pretty amazing. Hmm. All right. But, uh, you know, of course that's only eighth inch steel. But, hope everybody enjoyed this video. Thank you for being with me.